So I want to read you this quote I posted the other day real quick. I'm going to read it from my phone because it's a little long. All right. And it says, going deeper into your relationship with God will require sacrifice. Sometimes you just can't bring certain people where God is leading you. And that's just the truth. The reality is that as we level up, as we grow, as we walk more into our purpose or more in alignment with God, we're going to have to make some changes and we're going to have to start to take better care of ourselves. And that is extremely necessary to even reach that next level because our old habits, our, our old environments, you know what I'm saying? And some of the people we used to deal with, they, they can't be taken into that next phase in our life. All right. And so we've got to understand what we need to do. And, and even if right now you don't think it's time for that, you need to start preparing because at some point, yes, you're going to have to level up. But I would encourage you that let's make this now the time. All right. So here are some things you can do. Number one, fasting and detoxing. And, and please understand, this is about leveling up mentally and spiritually. And all these things I'm about to list for you pour into both. So again, fasting and detoxing. I'm, I'm huge on holistic health and the power of fasting. It's something that I've engaged in many times. I've done a lot of different fasts. And of course, I am not a doctor, so I want to encourage you to research these things, look into them. Don't, don't just take what I'm saying, you know, verify some of this information to make sure it's right for you. But I do believe that fasting can bring about so much mentally, spiritually, and physically. I've gone as long as seven days, no food, just water. For me, one of the most amazing experiences ever. And I can tell you that every time I've done fasting, whether it was those seven days, three days, one day, whatever, I've gained more clarity. Now, understand that fasting in general, the argument can be made that you can fast in various ways. It could be any kind of sacrifice of something that you typically cons consistently engage in that you will now remove and replace more with prayer, meditation, trying to connect with the spirit, connect with God. So I've done fast from social media. I've done fast from TV, so on and so forth. But I, I do feel the need to tell you that I am a stronger believer in the fasting of food and that the ways that it helps spiritually is that we've got to understand a lot of what we're eating right now is contaminated that's just the reality of it and i know that we cannot or it's very difficult to escape the contamination 100 percent, but we can diminish it greatly and by diminishing it greatly we can help uh to get our hormones back on the right track, which our hormones being off contributes to a lot of issues that we struggle with. It contributes to a lack of focus. So that struggle to be completely present mentally is being impacted by what you're putting in your body with the food, all right? And, and so your, your ability to have energy and, and things of that nature. And so that also includes your ability to connect spiritually can be hindered by how much you're eating or what you're eating. And we'll get more into that a little bit later. But the point is fasting will help cl clean the body up, all right? And allow the body to go into its own healing mechanisms and allow you to, again, draw closer spiritually, but also clear your mind uh, mentally. So it's very, very good to do. Again, if we're talking about the food fast, you don't have to jump right into doing seven days. I mean, that might sound ridiculous to some of y'all, right? And let me just say, there are people who've gone way more than seven, 20 days, 30 days. Again, read about it. But hey, maybe you start with just intermittent fasting. And so intermittent fasting is essentially when you only eat for a certain period of time. So typically, uh, at the bottom baseline of intermittent fasting is not eating for 16 hours and only eating for an eight hour window. So an example might be you only eat between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. All right. Therefore, your body is you're, you're giving your digestive system a break for 16 hours. And then in that eight hour window, you eat what you eat. This can be very beneficial and again, help you get into the groove 
of fasting. And then from there, you might go 20 hours or 18 hours, then 20, then you try 24 hour fast. But I don't want to just do, stay on that. But I just want to again stress that yes, I, I have found fasting to be an amazing, amazing. And I definitely believe it is a huge key to leveling up spiritually and mentally. But also I mentioned detoxing. Detoxing is another way, and that might be how you start. Maybe you're not ready for any kind of fast right now, but doing a detox of some sort, uh, whether it be there's all types of detoxes right now. Um, you know, I, I have a close friend, you can check him out, Dr. Bobby Price. He has a special detox, you know, go to his website. But either way, um, these things are great because when you're, again, when you're, you don't understand how much toxins you may have in your body that is affecting your mind, that is making it harder for you to connect spiritually, all these different things. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to go too deep into the fasting detoxing. There's a lot more to talk about. I'll probably one day do a video where I bring Dr. Bobby on and, and bring other experts on to really dive into this, but it's definitely something you should look into if you want to level up spiritually and mentally. Now, the second thing I suggest if you want to level up spiritually and mentally is creating a morning routine. So in general, structure, all right? Adding more structure in your life is a wonderful thing. It's, it's kind of like organizing your life. You know, when you're in a room full of clutter, it's hard to think, it's hard to focus. Well, sometimes that clutter is not your room, it's your brain. And it's all over the place. It's not settled. It's your, your routine, your, everything. You're just freestyling life. And because everything is so all over the place, you struggle to have peace. You struggle to have rest. You struggle to have focus. And again, how can you think straight or more effectively if your brain is exhausted? Mental exhaustion is very real and it impacts so many people. But what can help diminish that exhaustion is structure and organization. So to me, a morning routine is great in helping in that way. But first, let me say this, or let me just add this real quick. It's great in setting the stage for the day. So let's start there. When you wake up, a bad habit that many of us have, and I say us because I do it too, but I'm, I'm fixing it and I have been fixing it and I've gotten a lot better. We wake up. And what do you do? You go straight to your phone. You, you go straight to electronics. You go straight to doing stuff. And it's like, you don't even give yourself a chance to breathe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and what you don't realize is that when you do that, you start your day rattled. You start your day just creating anxiety and all these different things that don't allow you to have a smoother, more productive day. So what I want to encourage you in, in creating that morning routine is, if right now you're waking up every day at 8 a.m., okay? And so you may say, well, listen, I wake up at 8 a.m. and I got all these things to do. I don't really have time in the morning for a routine. Yes, you do. Let's start with waking up 30 minutes sooner. So instead of 8 a.m., we wake up at 7.30 a.m., all right? And at 7.30, the first thing we do is not grab our phones. We get up, we go drink some water. Hydrate your body. That's a great way to start the day, all right? Then maybe what I like to do, and I'm going to get more into it later, is stretch. I do a stretching routine, and in my stretching, I meditate, and I do these different things, okay? And there's a lot of other things, and I'm going to mention some of this as we go along in the video, but just finding what you want to include that's about setting the stage for the rest of the day, getting your mind in the right place. And then after your 30 minutes are up, now you get to your, your work or taking care of the kids or whatever it is you got to do. So make time and figure out how you can create that morning routine. And I'm telling you, you're going to see a huge, huge difference. So now number three on the list of how to level up spiritually and mentally is adding daily prayer and meditation. All right. So as we talked about just now with the morning routine, that's some of the things I do. When I, and, and the way that I look at meditation real quick is more so clearing my mind, calming it, you know, focusing on positive things, uh, maybe even saying affirmations. And, and my meditation also is about prayer. And, and that's what I believe we, we got to do. A lot of times, again, when we get too busy and we have no structure and we're all over the place, 
The whole day could pass and we haven't prayed at all. All right. And it's not that the prayer has to always be something long and drawn out. Like, I don't want you to force prayer and and force saying all these extra things that you're not really even connecting with what you're saying in that moment. But just a quick talk with God, giving thanks and praise, you know, um, you know, even what I'll tell you what I do when I pray. You know what I'm saying? I, I thank God for the day that's for the new day, for the new opportunity. I thank God for what's going to be a productive, positive day. So I'm speaking this into existence. I'm not even saying, God, please make this day positive. No, I'm saying I'm, I'm thanking you now for it's going to be that way. I'm thanking you now for whatever today, whatever happens today. I know it's your will. It's good for me. It's necessary. I'm all for it. Let's get on with it. You know what I'm saying? That's how I pray. Now, and of course, depending on what's going on, I might be praying for certain people. There may be certain talks about certain things. For me also, I ask, God, okay, what, what do I need to focus on today? What is my task for today? You know what I'm saying? That's one of the other things I've added to my prayer. Now, again, what you want to add into your prayer is up to you. But just having that daily connection with God is good to again leveling yourself up. It's good to getting you getting yourself to become more spiritually aware, more spiritually in tune. It will help you as well as practicing hearing God's voice by learning how to ask questions. That's that's one of the reasons why I'm asking God, what is my task for today? So I get comfortable with the asking and the listening to an answer in the spirit. All right? And that's what I believe is going to be extremely beneficial for you. So creating more daily prayer and meditation. And it's, and the reason why it'd be great to add that to the morning routine is because what better way to start the day than with some prayer and meditation? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't put it off to later on in the day because the day can go in so many different ways that before you know it, you don't get to do any prayer and meditating. So start the day off with it. That will, again, set the stage for you. That will help you and it's almost like working out your spiritual and mental muscles, all right? It's exercising them in the morning, and that's what makes them stronger and better and allows you to have more success in those areas. All right, so let's keep this moving. And now the fourth thing to do to level up spiritually and mentally is embrace personal accountability, all right? So listen, it's really hard to grow. It's pretty much impossible to grow. If you are stuck into a men, stuck in a mentality that's always looking to blame other things and other people, we have to get out of a victim mindset if we want to level up. Plain and simple. Don't get me wrong. I understand that sometimes things happen to us that are beyond our control, that we didn't necessarily bring upon ourselves, right? But if we get caught uh, falling into that trap of a victim mindset, we're not, we're not doing ourselves any favors. We're, we're not making anything better. We're not learning how to move forward and how to create progress and be productive. We're going to end up dwelling in misery, negativity, hurt, disappointment, and that's not good for you. And now I, I feel, I feel in my spirit, I have to share this. So quick story. I remember when I was going through a spiritual process of growth. Um, I was reading a lot of books on spirituality. I know a lot of people would say, well, read the Bible or read scripture. You know what I'm saying? What, whatever your belief system is. But to me, when, when you're not at a place where you can understand scripture directly, it can be very beneficial to read books that maybe interpret or discuss and help break it down. All right. And we'll get more into that later. But the point is here, uh, somebody had recommended this book to me called From Prison to Praise. Listen, I don't know the author. I don't get nothing for promoting his book, but I'm, I'm giving you my real life story. They had told me to read this book and I read it. And to just a quick synopsis or, or one of the main things I learned from it was to thank God even in the moments that things don't look good. All right. And that we think it's a bad situation, but you never know. And so the story, I got so many stories that apply to that principle, but the one, I guess it was the first one that happened after I read the book was I remember I used to live in Miami and I moved to Georgia. And I want to say like two weeks in after being in Georgia, I don't really know the roads, right? And so I'm driving down this road and 
out of nowhere, it splits. And I'm like, oh, snap, I don't know which way to go. So I end up like moving the car some way and I kind of hit another car. All right. And then, so then we pull off to the side and I'm just going to be real with y'all. I was under the impression I had a warrant out for my arrest. <laughs> now listen, before you judge me and jump to any conclusions, okay, the warrant was for a speeding ticket, all right? At least that's what I believed it was, that, that I had an outstanding speeding ticket that I had not paid, and I might have a warrant for this because I, I forgot to pay. It's a long story, all right? But either way, uh, we pull out to the side. And so I'm scared. Like, I don't, I don't want to see no police. I don't want no problems. So I go to the person. I'm like, listen. And to be honest with you, the accident may not have even actually been my fault. But I wasn't even trying to process that at that time. I was just like, yo, I got to get the hell up out of here. I cannot see the police right now. So I begged and pleaded this person to let me. I said, yo, here's my numbers. If I will pay for whatever. Just let's, let's just handle this ourselves. No police. They said, no, we are waiting for the police. We are not letting you go. Okay. And I was, man, I was hurt. So I went to the car. And I remember what the book was saying. And I said, okay, you know what? I'm just going to thank God. And I said, you know what, Lord? I thank you. I thank you. I, I trust whatever is supposed to happen here will happen. And everything will work out for good. And I'm, everything's going to be okay. I thank you for even allowing me to be able to afford to pay for whatever the damages are. You know what I'm saying? And if a ticket comes or whatever, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So anyways, police pull up, right? And they go talk to the person and then they come talk to me and they, you know, they get my side of the story or whatever. And they say, okay, cool. And I said, listen, I just want to let you know right now. I tell the police this. I said, I'm just going to be honest with you. I might have a warrant. All right. I, I'm like, I'm not even going to sit there and play this game or whatever. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Maybe that was stupid. I don't know. But I just told him the truth. Right. He said, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'll look into all this. I'll get back to you. I want to say maybe 10, 15 minutes later, he comes back. He says, hey, man, there was nothing in the computer. No warrant, no ticket, no nothing. Gone. And he said, we talked to some witnesses, and they said, it wasn't your fault. And, 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 and they couldn't determine who was at fault. So they was like, you can go home. No ticket, no nothing. Man, I was, man, I can't tell you how hard I was praising God on the way home from that. But the point was like, now granted, not all situations work out that beautifully. All right. But the point is learning to, to praise God in those moments, even when things go wrong. Now, I know that kind of went off tangent from the whole point of taking personal accountability. All right. So let's bring it back there. My, my spirit just led me in the direction of giving that story. But going back to personal accountability, the point is that, again, for growth, we've got to... Oh, I, and I was mentioning how we don't need to get, fall into that victim mindset. And the reason why I get that story is because sometimes things just happen and we got to learn to praise God even in those moments. But, you know, getting back to the victim mindset issue, that hinders our ability to evaluate situations and understand what can I learn from this. And the goal, if we want to level up mentally and spiritually, is always looking for the lessons, always looking from, okay, how can I handle this better next time? What can I, what positives can I learn from this? Not, not taking away negative perceptions, not, well, I learned I can't trust nobody anymore in life. That's not, that's not healthy. You know what I'm saying? Or I learned men ain't worth nothing. No, that's not, that's not good either. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like we got to figure out, okay, what positive lessons or what lessons can we learn that will allow us to create more positive results going forward. And so when we embrace, embrace personal accountability, we just create more opportunities for greater success. And it's extremely important, both from a mental perspective and a spiritual perspective as well. So let's keep this going. Now we're at number five. The fifth thing you can do to level up spiritually and mentally is daily or weekly reading. All right. And so I kind of alluded to it earlier. It's, and I, I, wanna, I want you to understand, it's not simply about reading scripture from the spiritual perspective. So first, from the mental perspective, reading is great for you, all right? 
reading is, is something that we should embrace more. We've gotten so accustomed to watching TV, being on social media, um, that we're not really feeding our brains the way that we should, all right? And so what you choose to read is up to you, but I would, of course, encourage you to read things that grow you, that make you better, that allow you to be more effective in whatever area, educate you on certain subjects so you can uh, be more well-versed in those areas, whether it be for work, whether it be relationship-wise or just as a human being, whatever, feed your brain, feed your mind. And again, I said daily or weekly because I understand for some of you starting off with daily reading might be a lot. It might feel tough, but at the very least, can we pick a day that we do at least maybe read for 10, 15 minutes or however long that you feel comfortable with? Let's create a regimen of doing that, but it would be great to get up to daily reading. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'm not even at daily reading right now, but that is my goal, and I think that should be yours. And now going from the spiritual perspective, again, and I mentioned it earlier, I think the mentality is always, well, read scripture, read scripture. Listen, if, if, if I'm not saying you shouldn't, I'm not saying you can't, right? It's great. However, I, I know for me, in, in my walk spiritually, it was hard at first. It was hard to understand, to be comfortable reading it. And so I found it easier to transition into it by reading other books that interpreted scripture that or included scripture that were just spiritually based books, you know, and helped me learn. And, and then it started to make more sense and then it became easier. You could do both. You could read a little bit of the other types of books and a little bit of scripture, however you want to mix it up. But just don't think, well, it, it has to be scripture. And, and if I struggle in that area, well, I'm just not going to do it at all. Like, no, just work it into your life as best as possible. But you definitely want to make it a more consistent part of your life. And that's definitely going to help you in leveling up. Now, number six is changing your diet. And so, again, we, we touched on it earlier, but let's get a little deeper into it. What you're putting in your body is affecting you mentally and spiritually, all right? I am a firm believer that the way the world is set up around us, it is set up to detach us from our spirit. It is set up, it is set up for us to not be at our optimal level mentally. And so we've got to recognize the things that contribute to hindering us in those areas. And diet is one of those things. Now, one of the things that I do, and again, you got to look into what's going to be best for you. But two things that I do is one, eating from my blood type. I'm a firm believer in it. Um, it's something that I, I learned about a couple of years ago. And essentially, just to give a quick overview, like there's the belief that our blood types determine what foods agree with our body, so to speak. And so essentially, there can be quote-unquote healthy foods. So for example, I, I can't eat too much tomato. If I start eating a lot of tomato, I get inflammation. I had a situation where I ate tomato for five days straight. By the fifth day, I had so much inflammation in my knee, I could not squat. My skin broke out. I was having all kinds of issues. And, I, and the way for me to resolve it was to take the tomato out. I did, add, I did take some turmeric for a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. But removing the tomato is what was necessary. And so again, we're not always aware of the foods that don't agree with us. So for me, the eating for the blood type is a big thing. But then also, I have chosen to go plant-based. That has also been very beneficial for me and also happens to be what my blood type is best suited for is a plant-based diet. I have, I have seen it to help me in a lot of ways with my energy, with my focus, with my skin, with my sleep, you name it. It has been a great thing to add. Now, again, may not be for everybody. I think you should look into it. I think you should try it, but it definitely will impact you mentally and spiritually. So, Maybe you're not ready for a full change. Even me, when, when, I, was, when I learned about my blood type and uh, there was a lady, there's a store that she owned and, and I used to go to her in Atlanta. She, it's called Your Vitamin Lady. I'm just shouting all, all my peoples out. And so I used to go to Your Vitamin Lady, right? And 
after we found out my blood type, she would, she'd be like, all right, you know, you're best suited to go vegan. And every time I would walk in the store, she'd be like, did you go vegan yet? Did you go vegan yet? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not ready. Like, chill. But what I learned to do was to slowly transition myself. So what I did was, okay, maybe like two days out the week, I would try to only eat plant-based, you know? And then the other days I was still eating how I was eating. And I was just slowly doing these things. I was finding those foods that, you know, there's a lot of vegan, more vegan or plant-based options now that try to make it uh, more pleasurable for people, okay? The, type, the way that they cook the food and make the food. So you try these different things out, you look into them. Maybe it's just one day out the week starting off, but you find ways to slowly but surely improve your diet and what you're putting into your body, as well as drinking enough water, staying hydrated, all these different things, drinking more tea. I love teas, I drink a lot of teas. They've been very beneficial for me. All these things help, and again, for some of you, you may be struggling to see, well, how does that really help spiritually? Well, again, when your body is out of whack, it, it throws everything off. And you're just not able to connect spiritually because your, your, your brain is not operating properly and your focus is off and your energy is off and all these things will hurt. Listen, it's hard to get up to be focused in on daily prayer when you're daily tired and worn out. That's just the reality of it. So improving those things that help with your energy will help you in, in covering all your tasks, including prayer and, and so on and so forth, or even the reading and, and su as such. So definitely look into changing your diet. All right, now we are at number seven. And number seven is, well, actually, real quick, let me just mention, uh, this is for the ladies. Even though this video is for men and women, real quick for the women, I have a membership program because a lot of people always ask me about one-on-one -on -one coaching or my coaching services. So I have a special coaching program that you can join that's going to be very helpful for you where we do live Q&As and I answer your questions. And there's a, a support group of women that you'll be able to uh, fellowship with or whatever you want to call it and really push each other on a better path. Go to receivingmyblessings.com or click the link in the comment section or in the description and you know, join in there. And again, I, I'm working on some things for the men, but for the ladies, check that out. So again, number seven, or let's, let's talk about number seven, which is removing the negative influences. So to make this kind of quick, listen, you've got to identify what's pouring negativity into your life. Because again, those things hinder you both spiritually and mentally. Those negative influences can be the TV that you're watching, the music that you're listening to, the environments that you're exposing yourself to. Yes, food and things like that can also contribute to it, <clears throat> as well as the people you keep around you, all right? Whether it be, it might be your relationship, sorry to say, the relationship you're, you're in might be the negative influence, but it might be friends and family as well. Now listen, this does not mean after you watch this video, go home and start cutting people off, all right? Like don't, don't jump straight to that conclusion. But it does mean when it comes to the people, it needs to be addressed. Um, it, it is something to pray about and talk to God if those people need to be removed. But either way, don't, don't just jump ahead and start, unless you already been you, you're supposed to, you're supposed to remove this individual. And that's another story. But otherwise, talk, pray, pray to God about it and, and talk to these people about the issue and see if it can be resolved. And then if not, yes, proceed with removing them. But when it comes to the music and the TV, really pay attention. Become aware. Like I noticed, I'm not even going to say who this person is, but there was an influencer that I was following. And for various reasons, whenever they post something, it would irk my nerves. All right, I'm just going to be real. It would irk me deep in my soul. And then I had to stop myself the other day and say, why am I still following them? They might be a great person. They may have done nothing personally wrong to me, but whatever is causing me to be irked by them and their posts isn't worth me exposing myself to if that's what's going to happen. So I had to unfollow. Simple as that. It is what it is. You got to do the same thing. You got to notice it when you're watching certain shows, how is it making you feel? How are you feeling after you're done watching the show? Does it put you in a bad mood? It's one of the reasons why I don't watch political TV anymore. 
Because, man, that stuff can get you riled up. I don't care which side of the fence you are. It can really put you in a negative place. So I'm like, no. I have a friend who loves watching it. I'm like, when, when he's here, do not put that on my TV. I don't want it. I only watch comedy because I only want to laugh and I only want positive vibes. You, whatever works for you works for you, but just start to eliminate those negative things and you're going to see your overall life be enhanced by that. All right, so we got two more and then a bonus real quick. And again, I'm going to run through these really fast. So number eight, uh, or the eighth thing you can do to level up spiritually and mentally is stretching and exercise. All right. Listen, health is wealth. You, you've heard that many times. At least I hope you have. And it's true. It's true. We got to put a greater priority on our health. So yes, the dieting helps. Getting proper rest helps. Drinking water helps. But some level of exercise is good for you, even if it's just walking. And it could be during your daily walk, or maybe it's every other day that you walk outside for 20, 30, 40 minutes, whatever. That could be your also your time of meditation and prayer. So you can literally combine some of these practices all into one thing. So it could be you take your walk and you, and you do these other things, or maybe while you're on a treadmill exercising, you're reading some books, you can combine a lot of this to more efficiently knock them out, so to speak. But I also mentioned stretching because again, I think it's just good to get the blood flowing, all right? Your brain needs blood, your, your limbs need blood, you feel better, you feel more relaxed, you feel more loose. It helps decrease the chances of you being injured by whatever. You know, as we get older, sometimes when, when you don't stretch and you're not flexible, it starts to hurt to bend over and pick something off the floor. You know, it starts to, sometimes it might hurt to sit on the toilet seat. I mean, who knows? But stretching will help alleviate that. And the, the less your body is in pain, the better you feel, the more your brain can focus, the more, again, you can connect spiritually because you're not struggling with these other areas that are hindering you. So look into adding more exercise and stretching into your life. All right, and now number nine, and again, I have a bonus after this, is practice positive thinking or daily affirmations, all right? So you, you just want to be mindful and conscious of not dwelling in negative thought. You know, I, I make it a habit to catch myself when I think negative things and re-say it to myself in, in a positive way. Like, for example, if, if I'm, let's say I'm waiting for someone to send me a check, right? And I'm saying to myself, man, if I don't get my check today, I'm about to blow up. I stop myself and I say, no, if I don't get my check today, I'll be fine. I'll be good. I'll, I'll address it as, uh, you know, as it needs to be. I change the way I think about it because a lot of times we project negative actions and negative reactions to things um, by, by what we put in our own mind. Change that, you know? Even in when you're looking at other individuals, you're like, man, I can't stand them. No, stop yourself. Do you even know them? <laughs> like sometimes you don't, you don't really know who this person is. You, they ain't do nothing to you. You know what? Remind yourself. You don't know them. I, I hope they have a great day. I hope they're blessed. I, I hope they're walking in God's will. Like that's it. Keep it moving. And literally, these are things I do for myself. And again, the more you can help yourself think positive and remove all that negative thinking, the more you can level up spiritually and mentally, and the more you can enjoy your life. You know, it just makes everything better and makes your spirit lighter and it makes people more drawn to you. You know what I'm saying? Because you're giving off that good energy, that, that good spirit. So definitely do what you can to practice it. And also quick plug, I have a book also on that called Daily Affirmations for Healing, which helps with positive affirmations in different areas of your life. I'll also include that in the comment section uh, and description or go to Affirmations for Healing. Dot com. And now real quick, the last, the bonus is healing. If you know me, you're a new healing is going to be somewhere on this list. All right. Bottom line is when we're holding on to past pain, disappointment, and hurt, that creates a lot of blockage in our life. A lot of blockage emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and yes, physically as well. Emotional trauma 
manifests into a lot of physical ailments. It, it creates emotional stress, and that stress triggers a lot of disease and sends you to, into, sends you to the ER, and, and, and it, it allows other d diseases or what could have been a, a simple thing get magnified, all right? So we've got to release that stress from our body emotionally, and we've got to heal. We've got to do the work, embrace the healing process, and when we do that, and, and, and please understand, the blockage, yes, it occurs spiritually as well. Because when you're thrown off in other areas of your life, you got to understand a lot of times it's going to make it harder for you to hear God. Because that trauma can create fear. That fear can create a, a struggle to embrace the things that God is telling you that maybe you don't want to hear or maybe you don't want to do or things of that nature. And that creates more of a disconnect. So it's important that we do what we need to do to heal so that we can walk in our full potential and live a higher quality of life. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. A lack of boundaries invites a lack of respect. The reality is that when we are engaging with someone, specifically having a romantic relationship with an individual, we have to understand that everyone doesn't know